Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. We're so excited to have you here today. As you can see, I'm joined with a very special guest. We have Sam McKenna in the house, one of the world's greatest email copywriters. And I'm going to give people a few minutes to, to trickle in. But while we do, I want to know in the chat, what outbound response rates are you seeing right now? What are you getting from your emails and your sequences? How many people are getting back to you? Uh, six, 17, zero, 18, 1.1, 43%. What are, why are, why are you here? <laughs> you should be sending more emails. We've got some twenties, almost none, some ones, some fives, 0.9 way down in the last few months. Um, I'll call that out while people trickle in. If you see a big drop in your email deliverability or your reply rates, or your open rates, check out our webinars about email deliverability. That could be what's causing the drop in performance. But we have some incredible content today with Sam about how to get those numbers really, really high up. Tom, out of 20,000 emails, four or five responses. We got problems, Tom. We got to fix that. Okay, so we've got plenty of people here. I am going to get this started. Um, everyone, let's do it. So I'm going to run us through some housekeeping. Then I'm going to pass things over to Sam. She's going to run you through her literally trademark method, show me you know me, for how to get anyone to reply to your cold emails. I'm going to show you how to do it in Apollo. Those of you who have been to these webinars before know this is not thought leadership. This is action leadership. We're going to show you how to do it. We're going to walk you through some examples of emails, and then we'll do a Q&A at the end. Stay all the way through, y'all. This is um, this is just jam-packed with actionable content. Here we are with how to write the perfect cold email. Um, okay, yes, Robin's asking, a million people are asking, are we recording it? We are recording this webinar, okay? And the, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, this webinar is sponsored by Apollo. That is my employer. If you're not familiar with Apollo, we're the world's only end-to-end -end sales engine. And if you haven't already, you should create an account for free at Apollo.io. Now, yes, we're recording the webinar. If you leave before the end of the webinar, I will be offended and I will cry, but I will still send you the recording to your email and we will post it on YouTube and on our website so you can find it afterwards. If you have a question, please try and drop it in the Q&A tab on the right side of your screen. If you're overwhelmed by the chat, you can navigate away from the chat tab by just clicking onto messages or docs or Q&A, any of the other tabs, and, and you won't see the chat, okay? Um, if you try and sell things in the chat or spam or are rude, we'll just boot you from the webinar and you won't be able to come to future ones. So please don't spam the chat, okay? Um, all right, everybody, we're gonna get this show on the road. Let's do it. But before we do, I wanna share something with you. On November 8th at 9 a.m. Pacific time, we have our first ever annual event. It's called Olympus. Now, why is this important? At Olympus, we are going to be revealing the brand new features coming to Apollo. We have three huge new features coming to Apollo that are game changers. And we have a lineup of incredible speakers. We have our CEO and our chief of product, but we also have this guy, Andrew Huberman, who's a neuroscience professor at Stanford University, who's gonna be talking about how to sell with science more successfully. I'm gonna run a quick poll before I pass it to Sam. If you guys wanna be the first to know about Olympus, about the new features coming to Apollo, if you wanna do a live Q&A with Andrew Huberman, and also Michael Seibel, who leads Y Combinator, the most successful startup incubator in the world, who's gonna be talking about how to take your company to 10 million in revenue, come to Olympus, it's free. So I'm gonna run a poll really, really, really quickly. Um, and if I can stop sharing my screen, I'll, I'll be able to have it take over the screen. So if you just say yes to this poll, that should be on your screen right now, I will register you for Olympus and it will get added to your calendar. That's all you have to do. So this is our first ever annual event. Please say yes if you're interested in seeing incredible new features from Apollo, hearing from Andrew Huberman, Michael Seibel, and some other incredible speakers as well. We'll send you more information. I'm not going to run this for too long because we have a ton of content to get through. I have a thousand yeses right now. That's feeling pretty good. want to see if we can get that to 2,000. And then Sam just has this incredible show me you know me method about email copywriting, and it's coming, I promise. I'm not going to hold that up too long. We'll give this 10 seconds, and then we're going to move on. 
and if you stay to the end and, and you don't get to say yes right now, I'll run the poll again. Don't worry about it. Okay. Five, four, three, and that's all she wrote, everybody. Okay. <laughs> so with no more further ado, I'm going to share my screen again, and I'm going to introduce the most incredible email copywriter I have ever met, Sam McKenna. Oh. Um, this is me. You guys know me. This is Sam McKenna. I'm going to pass this over to Sam in one second. Sam McKenna, though, guys, she runs Sam Sales Consulting. She also formerly was the director of enterprise sales at LinkedIn. We all use LinkedIn. Sam sold all of us on LinkedIn. She's the best of the best. She's going to take you through her show me, you know me framework. I'm going to stop sharing. I'll give it to you, Sam. Please take it away. Amazing. Thanks. Uh, you guys, so, so great to meet you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Super stoked to be here. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff today, right? Um, specifically around cold emails and how to get this cooking a little bit better for you guys. So I'm going to pop into our slideshow. Josh, give me the thumbs up that you guys can see our We've slides. We've got the, the gold cast infinite mirror of death. Oh, the infinite mirrors, of course. Hold on, you guys. We're going to get this popping in just a second. Feel free to give me a, a hard time until then. And then uh, we should be good to go. And you should see my slides now, yeah? Yep, there we go. Love it. So show me you know me, you guys. For for those of you who don't know me, I have been in enterprise sales for about 16 years, uh, broken a ton of records, was an individual contributor for seven, executive leader for the rest, and then started Sam Sales. An all-women team. Can we give it up for all women in sales, especially on October, uh, Women in Sales Month, of 14 we have over here. Um, we've been in business for about four years. We have almost 200 clients. We've done a great job. We're tired. It's on caffeine. But man, are we having a great time. And part of what our foundation is based on is exactly this. Show me, you know me. If you can squint and see in the background on my wall, you'll also see that it is framed behind me, along with a pineapple that is sometimes precariously positioned behind my head with the top coming out. And urgent bird gets the worm, which is one of our philosophies. We love urgency. But let's talk about show me, you know me. Why it matters, why it's really important. First of all, it's just the art of knowing our buyers as humans, what the company is that they do, what their vertical is, and just digging into that. And to me, show me you know me is something that bleeds from every single touch point you have with your buyer. The very first email you send, all the way to when you've had them as a client for 20 years. The key that I want you guys to take away from this first and foremost is that we probably are going to be in sales for most of our career. The majority of us are going to make a career out of this. So think about the things that you do today and how is this gonna impact you in a year from now, in five years from now? Do the things today that help build a long game and really set you up for success. So show me you know me. What do we know about our buyers? How can we do our research? How can we dig into what their company is doing? What's going on with them? And really set ourselves apart. So to me, this starts with our subject line. And here's what I would say. Focus less on quantity and focus more on quality. If you even send, don't really rise me, if you even send 20 show me you know me emails in a week, you're going to be off to a killer start. Think about all of those percentages you guys shared earlier, how low your open and response rates are. By the way, industry average, I saw a lot of questions about that. Industry average, about 6% ugh, of an open rate and 0.9% of a response rate. We're not even getting a full percentage point. That's industry average. But industry average isn't show me you know me. And industry average is sending all the same stuff. Quick question, Josh and Sam connect. Josh and Sam with inequality signs in the middle. What is that about, right? Instead, stand out. And it starts with the show me you know me of your subject line. Now, I want you guys to look at the one that's on the left, on the right here. Running podcast plus Chicago pizza. Raise your hand if that makes sense. No, nobody, because it was written for the specific person that's receiving it. So first and foremost, we're going to think about how to create a subject line, right, to convince the person to even open up our email. That show me you know me is pulled first from their LinkedIn profile. And second, if there's nothing on their LinkedIn profile, it's literally a dust storm from like 2008 of when they last updated it. Go to the company website. What are quotes that are going on? Where have they spoken on a podcast recently? Have they been mentioned in an article? Are there quotes you can pull? Have you listened to this podcast today and you were desperate to get Josh's attention and you can pull a quote from that and throw it in your show me, know me subject line so he will give you a meeting. All of that stuff is relatively easy to find. And yes, it may take you 20 or 30 minutes to write your first show me, know me subject line and then the tie to it, but 
give it a shot with 20 emails, stick with it. I promise you will get more efficient. The goal is that we get around to five to seven minutes for creating each of these emails. Now, before you tell me, I've got a hundred of these to send every single day, what am I gonna do? Slow your roll, we'll talk about why this matters and how to do this a little bit more efficiently. Then let's think about beyond the subject line. What's the next thing they look at? It's the first sentence. Think about your own user experience in your inbox. What pops up in Outlook, if you guys are unfortunately still using Outlook, if you're looking at your Gmail, when you're looking at your phone, you see two things. Well, technically you see three. The name of the person, no one knows who we are. The subject line, and then the first sentence. And those two things, subject line and the first sentence, are what determines whether we get that email open or whether they move on. The critical thing to keep in mind here is how do we show up in a different way? Two things I would tell you. I know I saw in the chat earlier that some people put in, I hope this finds you well. If you do not already follow my future husband, Corporate Bro, on Instagram, I highly recommend that you do that. And also Google his Hope This Finds You Well video. It makes me shake laughing every time, no matter how often I watch it. But cut that stuff out. That's what we normally see, right? We see two things. Hope this finds you well or we see people jump right into the sales pitch. So I might email Josh and be like, Josh, companies like Apollo and our clients are using us and doing this, blah, blah, blah. Jumping right into the sales pitch. No better way to say, Psst, this is a sales email. And by putting that front and center or starting with a nicety, happy Monday, there's no such thing. Happy Tuesday, hope this finds you well. Cut all of that out. Instead, do two things. Number one, start with who you are. Start with this line that you see right here. We have yet to be properly introduced, but I'm Sam McKenna and I'm the CEO of Sam Sales. Now, some of you are probably thinking, but wait, I'm not supposed to introduce myself at the beginning of the email. I was told to never use my name. What am I supposed to do? The thing I want you to consider is the combination of a show me, you know me subject line plus the, we have yet to be properly introduced. It's so different. You've done your research and it makes somebody think, huh, I don't know this person, but they seem to know something about me and maybe we should have been introduced. So that combination often than not gets you an open, which is half the battle. What do we write next? That's forthcoming. But just doing this, I promise you, I'd be stunned if every single one of you didn't get a pop in your open rates just as a starter. Now, what do we do here? In the first part of your email, you're going to want to think about tying authentically right to what it is you said. So somebody might email me and say, Sam, I see you went to FSU, right? Maybe they write Go Knowles. Any Knowles fans out there? It's okay if you're not. Any Knowles fans though? No, no one? So somebody might write that in the subject line, Go Knowles plus Apollo.io, let's say. And then they write in there and they're like, Sam, I see you went to FSU. That's awesome. Go Knowles. Want to buy your stuff? And I'll be like, no. What about FSU? You have to think about an authentic tie to whatever it is that you say. Put that there in the front and center. You can also add it directly as a PS if you want. PSs are awesome to catch the eye and pull somebody down. But after you do that, make sure there's a beautiful transition. What most people do is say, Sam, so you went to FSU. I had a great time. I always went there. I tailgated. I memories of my dad. It's so awesome. Hey, do you want to buy my stuff? No. We have to transition. While I could talk about FSU all day, while I could go on about this forever, while I have seven other things on your profile that I'd be so excited to talk to you about and connect with you on. The real reason for my outreach is XYZ. Now, one thing I wanna tell you too about the subject line and the website and finding information there, you guys have surely heard the words compelling event. Use a compelling event. What a great way to stand out on your subject line. I sort of disagree and here's why. When we think of compelling events, we usually think of the lowest hanging fruit, the laziest way for us to be able to get somebody's attention. So maybe we get a Google alert and it says Apollo.io raised $100 million. Apollo.io raised $100 million. Let's hear it for Apollo. Amazing. Now, if we email Josh and we say, Josh, congrats on your raise of $100 million. Guess what else? He's going to get the exact same subject line from 4,200 other people. Let's be different, right? So dig in a little deeper. What can we find out about Apollo other than their fantastic raise, right? Think about that stuff. Super, super huge as a way to stand out. Again, connecting the dots on it, what matters to us about that, and then the transition. One more thing I'm going to tell you guys. Let's use Tesla as an example. If we remember some time ago, Tesla had their fifth straight quarterly positive earnings. And what does that mean? Tesla got on the S&P 500. What does that mean everybody did? Send Tesla an email, congratulations on your S&P 500. Wow, riveting, thank you so much. No one's congratulated us so far. Instead, 
we took a look. We found that Tesla was doing these really cool pop-up shops throughout Europe, and they were tying it to where in the world is Carmen San Diego. Three of you on the call might remember that show, and that's fine. But if you think about this, instead of congrats on your S&P 500, we leveraged that, sent it to 400 global marketers, and got a 38% response rate. Not open, response rate. What a killer way to stand out. So talk about that in subject line, tie it authentically, do your transition. And then what's the challenge we're solving for our buyers? Look at the emails that you guys are sending today. And here's what I want to ask you. Does your email say what your company does? Or does your email say the challenge you solve? And why this is so important is I bet it says what your company does, right? We help modern organizations do X, Y, Z. We drive 3X pipeline for you in a day. Cute, you and everybody else, supposedly. If it says what you do, what we have to think about is that we make it too easy for the buyer to just say, oh, we already do that, don't need you, bye, right? Instead, think about how we can do something like this. And let me give you guys an example, right, of something around LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So we might think of this like LinkedIn Sales Navigator, right? This is the line of business that I used to support when I worked there. I'm sure many of you guys use it. Psst, if you want to learn how to use it better, come to our website. We have tons of content on it. But here's the thing. What most reps will say, right, when thinking of how to leverage Sales Navigator, they'll say something like, hey, we can help you leverage insights and data about your buyers at the right time and help your sellers. We have Apollo for that. We have Zoom Info for that. We have Google Alerts for that. We don't need you. So we've got to think about the challenge. If I was going to reach out to somebody, let's say I don't want to train them on LinkedIn Sales Navigator, like we often do, I might say something like this. Given the modern sales organization you are, I suspect you're a LinkedIn Sales Navigator customer, but also suspect your reps don't use it as much as you'd like or to the full breadth of its capability. We also can make this assumption because we hear this from every single one of our customers. We spend 100,000 million trillion, good trillion dollars on LinkedIn Sales Navigator and 5% of our buyers, of our reps use it. Great. So we know that's a challenge. You know the challenge your buyers have because you talk to them every day, because you get on discovery calls, because hopefully your leadership team has identified here are the five things that our buyers go through and how we can solve them. So I want you to think about, do you surface a challenge that maybe they don't have, or maybe they have, but they don't know that they have, or that they have, and they know they have, but then that's only half the battle. What we have to think about that is the hidden or forthcoming objection. Think about what you're saying to your buyers. We can help you. We suspect you have a challenge and we can help you do it. And they're going to say, okay, well, so what? We probably already have a solution for that. Or we've got something else that's coming up that can already solve that. Instead, hey, Sam. Yeah, Josh. So sorry to interrupt you. I am so riveted by this. Um, <laughs> we're getting a couple of people asking if you can go a tiny bit slower. And also to yeah. those of you who feel like this is going too fast, you will get the <laughs> recording and you will be able to watch this at your own speed. Okay, so uh, you there we have it. Back to you, it. Sam. Sorry to Here interrupt. Here it comes. No, you got it. No, thanks, you guys. Thanks for, for noting that. Um, we are pressed for time, so I just wanted to make sure we get through everything. But yes, I will slow down a little. Um, hey, let's talk about just the value proposition a little bit more, right? So three things you can think about here. One, the hook. What is a specific hook you can solve as a specific problem your buyer has? Again, just think about that. I might also, in pitching Sales Navigator, I might say something like, hey, I bet that 6% of your inbound leads come in from people who change jobs and reach back out to you. That's what industry average is like. What happens to the 94%? Get them to think, what's a hook I can use? What are their pain points? And the other thing is we want to think about not gains. People actually move much faster when we think about loss aversion, right? So thinking about customers churning, thinking about employees um, having going through attrition, right? And quitting. Don't think about, we can help you get this. We can help you build XYZ more pipeline. Think about how you can spin it to loss aversion instead. They would tell you, as you think about this challenge, as you think about the value proposition you have, if you look at this and you say, I just don't know what it is that we do. I don't know what resonates. Here's a really cool hack that you can use. One, go to your boss. Let's hope to God that they already know what those are and they can direct you. But if they can, see if your buyer exists in your organization. So if I worked for a company and I sold two CROs, I might go to my CRO and I might just say, hey, this is the value proposition that I talk about. What do you think? Also, if you are a BDR or if you're a junior AE and you're like, I am not going to go talk to my super scary CRO, 
what an impact you would make by simply saying, I love your feedback on something. This is the tactic that I'm using. This is the value proposition. How would it resonate with you? What is it that you think differently? Only cannoli. You will stand out as the only person that does that. But again, if you've got, if you're selling even not to a stereo, SVP of sales, CMO, somebody in IT, go and talk to them, build that value proposition with them. What an amazing asset you will be to your team. Now, again, we want to think about the hidden or forthcoming objection. If I reach out to Josh and I say, Josh, you guys have LinkedIn Sales Navigator. I'm sure you're not using it to the full breadth of its capability. We'd love to talk to you about it. Interested in learning more? Josh is going to say, no. I have a customer success manager for that. We have a former LinkedIn rep that works here. We're good. I have to think about the but, right? Look at this cute cartoon. I have to think about the but that is forthcoming, right? What is it that's going to be an objection? Because I'll tell you, your buyers are not going to respond to that email. They're not going to say, but we have a CSM for that. Why? One, they just don't have the time to respond to you and 30 other people that have reached out. The other thing is that they don't want to argue with you because what are we going to do? We're going to hear that objection and we're going to say, wait, 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 wait. And we're going to respond and we're going to try to capture their attention instead. Just do that right then and there, right? Think of what the most common objection is that you get to your technology, your platform, your solution, your analytics, whatever it is that you sell. What's the most common objection? Get at it in that email. So I might say something like, right, while you do already have a CSM, right, I suspect you have a CSM that can support you. I might say customer success manager in case they don't know what CSM is. Here's how I'm different. Here's why we matter. Here's the impact that I can make. That value statement there has to be the so what of what you do, right? You've got to get around that one way or the other. And in the first email is the place to do it. So let's just recap really quick. We've got a subject line that says, show me, you know me. The second component is our first sentence, not hope this finds you well. The next component is the transition into, well, I could talk about this all day. The real reason for my outreach is value proposition. Make sure that value proposition is a specific challenge that we know they have, and then pause and just think, if I send this, what will they likely object to? What will they say back? If I could get everybody to respond and object, what would they say? Pick the thing that is the most likely to happen, right? There might be seven different scenarios, but pick the most broadest one and then write that in. While you may already have a CRM in place, while you may already have a analytics tool in place for this, here's why we're different. And here's the so what of why you should care, right? And it's not that you have a great user interface. It's not that you're cloud-based. It's not that your integrations are amazing. You've got to get deeper than that. And the so what is always going to have value proposition and so what will always need to be tied to that specific buyer persona, right? Let's think of the Tesla example again, right? Think about those things. What is a Tesla? What, what do they do? They're an electric car. Okay, what's the benefit of that? Oh, you don't want to get gas. It's good for the environment, whatever else. And then we've got to think about the so what. And when we think about that so what, we have to think about the buyer persona. My so what for a 24 year old that doesn't commute a lot is going to be very different than my so what for a 49 year old dad of three who is usually late in the mornings getting his kids to daycare or whatever it may be. I've got to think about who that buyer is so I can tie a here's why you should give a darn. I was told I can curse. Here's why you should give a shit about this particular thing. Right. And then the close. How do we end this? So first of all, Think about the call to action. We don't want to say, can I book five minutes with you, 15 to 20 minutes, Tuesday at two o'clock. Instead, solicit for interest, up for a chat, interested in learning more. Don't specifically ask for time. Now, the other thing is we want to think about a calendar link. And I know Josh and I are going to have a little spar on this, just a touch. But here's the thing I would say. When you think about your calendar link, right? When I send out a calendar link, what am I doing in outbound emails specifically? I'm saying, hey, you book the time with me, right? Here's the link to my calendar, you do the work. It's really presumptuous. The other thing that I'm doing, I want you guys to think about like this in a real world dating scenario. Let's say I walk out, let's say I see Josh at a bar. Can't do this, we're both married and have kiddos, right? But let's say I see Josh at a bar, I'm like, hey, you're super cute, do you wanna go for a drink sometime? And Josh is like, totally, would love to. And I'm like, awesome. Here's my calendar link for you to book that date with me. 
Josh would be like, what in the actual hell just happened? I'd be like, I know, I'll see myself out. So think about this, right? If you really want to do a great mix, you've got this great calendar feature within Apollo.io, but use that in conjunction when, first of all, when somebody responds and says, we'd love to meet, I cannot wait to hear about your product. And you're like, I know it's because I wrote you an amazing email. But when you do that, say, here's some times I'm available. I would love to see when you're free. And if it's easier, here's my calendar link, right? So let's think about the buyer first. Now, if you're really gonna do it the same sales way, I actually wouldn't send the calendar link and here's why. I don't want that buyer, first of all, have to pull up two screens, right? They're gonna look at my calendar, theirs, back to mine, maybe other people's, pain in the butt. The other thing is, I just don't want them to work around my internal schedules, right? They're gonna work around my one-on-ones, my forecast call, my 17th massage of the week, just me, just kidding. They're gonna work through all of that, right? And I just wanna say, hey, I'm different. Tell me when you're free and I'll book time with you. Rarely do we have to chase and rarely does somebody say 17 times that do not align with mine. So just a little something to be different there. Final thing, how do you close? Um, there's some really good memes that are not so safe for work that talk about how what it means when you sign with best. And then there's some awesome really other good ones um, out there with other signatures. But here's what I would say. Don't use sincerely. Don't use best. If you get a best for me, I actually did sign an email best this morning. I was pretty excited about it. If you get a best for me, it means we're not on good terms right now. So think about that. Um, otherwise, just use thanks and cheers. Whether you use thank you, thanks, cheers, totally up to you. Also, exclamation points or not, what do we do? The thing to think about for you is whatever is authentic to you. If I was my authentic self, I would have 17 exclamation points at the end of my cheers. Would that terrify everybody? Yeah. Am I going to do it? I am 100% that person that has to go back in my emails and delete my exclamation points, which I still feel rude when I do it, but alas, right? Just make sure it's authentic to you. Whatever language you use in your emails, however you close, however you greet, whatever it is, make sure it fits who you are as a human. We sometimes see people who use humor in emails and then they join the calls and they're not funny. So make sure it is authentic to whoever you are, right? Get after it there. And then let's talk about Apollo.io. Josh, do we want to go through our emails or do we want to go through a demo? We are going to jump into Apollo and I'm going to show you all how to do do this in real time using Apollo, how to write a show me, you know, me email, how to find somebody that's worthy of getting a show me, you know, me email. We're going to go through it together. First of all, we're not done guys. We're going to come back and Sam is going to walk through some examples of show me, you know, me emails that actually got responses and book meetings with high value prospects. So stick around through my demo portion. But as you all know, I don't want this to just be about uh, thought leadership for you. I want this to be about uh, action for you as well. So we're going to get into Apollo and you guys should be able to see this screen right now. I'm trying. I, I've heard you in previous webinars. Uh, you guys all want the screen to be bigger. So I'm trying to execute on that. Now the screen is bigger. Um, I'm going to hide my face as well. So it'll be even bigger than that. Actually, I'm having trouble doing that. Janet, can you, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. And, uh, bear with me. This is live. I'm going to have to jump through a few different windows. Okay. So the first thing I want to do you guys is I'm going to come into Apollo and I'm going to go into my search tab and to save us some time, I've built what's called a saved search. So if you're in Apollo and you're often doing you're prospecting and you're looking for the same kind of people, you can just hit this save filter after you do a search and it's gonna save your searches. So you have some searches here that you've saved in the past. And I've done one, it's called VP of Ops Retail. I'm gonna click on it. Now I wanna give you guys some context for this example. One of you reached out to me on LinkedIn yesterday. I may mispronounce your name, Lila or Layla, Lila, I'm not sure, I'm um, sorry. Uh, and you asked, hey, can you show an example of selling to somebody other than a salesperson? How do you sell to somebody in retail? So for my example, guys, I chose VP of operations in the United States or Canada with between 500 and 2000 employees at the company who works in retail. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. And that's my list. So what I'm going to do now is I have returned this great list of all these VPs of operations. And I found somebody yesterday that I was really interested in. I've already saved them. And it's this person, Jim Rose. Okay. So if I click into Jim's name, I get this page and I can see that Jim is the president of vice president of operations at pilot. 
Now I'm actually familiar with Pilot. If you're not in the United States, uh, Pilot has a large chain of gas stations all across the country. So I know something about this company. I've interacted with them before. Um, but I want to actually go take a look at Jim's LinkedIn. And this is where things get tricky. I have to stop sharing my screen and share a different window so we can see Jim's LinkedIn because y'all want that big screen size. So here we go. All right. So I then went to Jim's LinkedIn. Okay. And I found Jim on LinkedIn. And immediately I start scrolling down and I can see that he's actually fairly active on LinkedIn. Um, if I refresh this, it should give me his post history. I'm hoping. Yeah. So he's fairly active. He posted last week, two weeks ago, a month ago. And I click into the first post and I see that there are, he, he's really writing about his team. And he's got these great pictures of him with people who work for him. And he has 30,000 team members, 850 locations, and one and a half million guests every day. I thought, okay, that's interesting. I've just learned something about his company. I've learned a little bit about him. Um, and I can use some of this in my email here in a minute. I also, if I go back to his profile, I keep scrolling down and I can see that he went to Buffalo State University. Now, I don't know anything about Buffalo State University. So I Googled, what is the mascot of Buffalo State? And I figured, all right, it's this Benji the Bengal. No idea, but I figured that out right now. Okay, I got Benji the Bengal. I also don't know where Buffalo State University is. So I put it into Google Maps and I searched for it. And I found that Buffalo State University is actually right on the border of the United States and Canada. And this is where I, I, I was like, OK, I'm curious. Where is the closest pilot Flying J gas station to Buffalo State University? And I actually figured out that it's in Canada. It's not in the United States. So I thought, all right, this is something. There's something coming together here. Uh, so. I kind of have enough information to pull this together, but there was one more thing that I did. I went to their website. I went to the Pilot Flying J website and I started scrolling down and I found that they don't call themselves gas stations. They call themselves travel centers. Okay. So now I feel like I have enough to do a show me, you know me, and I'm going to go back to my Apollo and I'm going to try and put one together. So here we go. I'm in Apollo. I've got Jim right here. Now what I can do is I can just click add the sequence, add contact to sequence, and I'm going to add him to a show me, you know, me sequence that I made yesterday. And I'm going to walk you guys through that sequence. It's right here. Okay. So this sequence is pretty straightforward. I've only added three steps, but you can add many more. The first one is a manual email. The second one is a phone call two days later. The third one is just an automatic email that follows up. I'm going to start with that so you can see what that looks like. This is just very simple. If you've been to my previous cold call or cold email webinar, you'll have seen this before. It just says, hey, first name, just wanted to see if I'm barking up the wrong tree. This is my follow-up email, y'all. But now I'm going to show you my show me you know me email. So I wrote this yesterday. It took me about 15 minutes, uh, but this is where it came together. Benji the Bengals' favorite flying J. Okay. So what I said was, hey, Jim. We haven't met yet, but I'm Josh and I run the couponing program at Coupons to Go. The person who asked me to do a demo like this works at a couponing company. I just made this up. Okay. I drive across the country often for work. And when I can, I stop at Pilot Flying J. That's what we call flattery friends. But then remember from their website, they don't call themselves gas stations. They call themselves travel centers. So I added that. Y'all have hands down the best experience of any travel center. Okay. When I saw you went to Buffalo State, I wanted to drop you a line of some Flying J trivia. This is where my Google Maps sleuthing comes in. I say, here it is. The closest pilot Flying J to Buffalo State is in what country? And then I continue. I said, well, that percolates. This is what Sam calls the transition. Uh, the real reason I'm reaching out is to chat about coupons to go. My guess is if you could find a way to both delight pilots, one and a half million daily customers, got that from his LinkedIn, and increase the per transaction revenue by 20% or more, made that up, you do it. But it's hard to get that kind of impact at your scale. That's what we do. While you already have some awesome coupons, uh, we've already helped your competitors, I call this FOMO, break their quarterly sales targets. If you're up for a chat, I'd love to talk. This is my email, okay? Now, you'll notice I did not include in this email a link to my calendar, like Sam said. But Apollo does have some incredible, absolutely incredible calendar uh, features in the Apollo meetings platform. And I want to show you guys what that actually looks like and when and how to use that. So give me a second to find it. And I'm seeing people are saying, hey, that email was too long. 
And you're probably like, what the hell, Josh? I came to your last webinar and you said to keep every email super short. Well, I want to tell you guys something about that, right? Sometimes you're not going to be able to do show me, you know me. Um, in my experience, there's just, you're going to go to their LinkedIn. There is nothing. You're going to go to their company site. There is nothing. In that case, I gave you guys a lot of tools in my previous webinar for what to do there. But when you do have something to, to, that you can write about, that you can craft an email for show me, you know me. Um, I want you guys to, to do that for your highest value prospects. And when you do that, Sam gets about 25% reply rate for her emails. Okay. So I want to show you guys what to do when someone replies. So I've already showed you how to write a show me, you know, me email using Apollo. Now, what do you do when someone responds and says that they're interested? Well, first, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the engage tab of Apollo and we're going to go to meetings. If you're familiar with Calendly, Chili Piper, any of those tools, you can cancel your subscription because Apollo has that in the Apollo platform today. This is brand new. It just came out and most of you haven't seen it before. When you land on, land on this for the first time, it's going to ask you to connect your calendar. Now, I've already done that. When you connect your calendar, you can then create a meeting type. Now, those of you who are SDRs, this is magic for you, okay? There's different types of meetings we can have in the calendar. One of them is for a single host, so that would be like me setting up meetings for myself. But if I'm an SDR, I could also do multi-host. So let's say I have one SDR who's supporting two or three account executives. I can choose a multi-host setup, which would allow me to send one calendar link and it would rotate between those eight account execs I support based on who's available first. I could also do a round robin. Okay, a round robin just puts my account executives in order. So if I'm supporting Bobby and Johnny, Bobby will get the first meeting, Johnny will get the second one. Okay, and then it'll go back and forth, back and forth. The last meeting type is incredibly powerful if you have inbound leads, guys. If you're getting leads coming to your website, you can actually use Apollo to route those people to a calendar where they can book a meeting right from your website. You don't have to then you know, go into Salesforce or HubSpot, find the lead, email them, add them to a sequence, all of that. You can just do it straight from Apollo with the inbound router form. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on that because I wanna show you how to do this and show me you know me, okay? So this is Apollo meetings. Makes it really easy for your prospects to book time with you and to uh, reschedule if needed. But here's what you do. Let's say you send a show me you know me and you get an email back that's like this. Yes, I'm interested. When can we talk? I can hit reply. And this is where the magic for me like really blows my mind. I can hit meetings because I've connected Gmail to Apollo and I can literally plug in my calendar link to my email in like two clicks. Now I've written a template for this and it looks like this. That's great. I'd love to chat. When is convenient for you? Now you'll notice my first thing in the email, I didn't say click my calendar. I actually asked when's convenient for you, right? I want to serve my buyer and make it as easy for them as possible. But here's where the calendar link comes in. P.S. If it's easier, here's a link to my calendar. And then using the meetings tool, all I need to do is click this copy scheduling link. I can highlight this little bit and you could save the template to do this, but I wanted to show you guys this. Bam. There's a link to my calendar. It was all right there. It was in my Gmail. I didn't have to do anything else. And this email just says, if nothing on here works for you, let me know and I can move stuff around. Okay, I wanna show you guys one more thing before we go into some more show me, you know me examples and we're doing the Q and A. You can also choose times from your calendar and embed those times in your email. So I wouldn't do this for a cold outreach. I would do this when I'm working a deal. I'm trying to get the second, third, fourth meeting set up. Something like this, it embeds the available times right into the email. I think that's pretty cool. It's super nifty. So that was my demo of how to do show me, you know me in Apollo. And I am going to run a poll right now where you guys have a few different options for what you can do. Okay. If you want, uh, I'm going to run it. Just give me one second. Okay. Um, can you guys see the poll? Yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. Go. Now, this poll, if you guys are curious, the meetings, Apollo meetings I just showed you is available for everyone um, in Apollo. You only get six meeting types on the basic plan. If you want more than that, you do have to pay. Um, but I'm running a poll right now. If you guys want to talk to somebody about Apollo or you want to get more training for Apollo, reply to this poll, okay? Uh, it's not letting me open the poll though. Janet, do you know why that might be? Um, that's weird. You can reply to the poll. You have four different options for the poll. And yeah, the poll's not opening. 
I'm going to I'm going to come right back. I'm going to refresh my computer cuz maybe it's me. Can you hear me, Sam? There's nothing yep. like doing it live, right? You do it live. <laughs> Every, webinars, everything. Maybe. Oh, he left us again. <laughs> While we wait for Josh to come back, here he is. I'm back. You're back. Oh, this is so weird. <laughs> there we go. There we go. The poll's open. Okay, so we give you four different options. In a previous webinars, you only had two. If you're new to Apollo and you want to buy it or get a demo, say yes to the first option. If you're an existing customer and you want to upgrade your plan to get more from Apollo with our custom or pro options, say yes to the second option. If you don't want to buy more Apollo, but you need more training, say yes to the third option. I have created with my team something called Apollo Academy, where I've made deep dive videos showing you how to use every single component of the Apollo platform. If you say yes to that, I'm going to send you a link to Apollo Academy. But if you love me, you'll say yes to the first or second option. People, uh, people around here care about those. So I'm not going to run this for too, too long. I'm just going to leave this running for about a couple minutes. And while we do that, I'm going to take some Q&A. But then, guys, don't leave because we're going to go through the show me, you know me methods with Sam. And I'm going to give you an option to get in touch with her as well. This is going to be super valuable, I promise. Okay. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. It was uh, that was pretty crazy. So some <laughs> questions for the Q&A. Um, you're asking, does it work with Outlook too? Yes, Apollo Meetings works with Outlook, so no worries there. You can connect your Outlook to the meetings. You can connect your Google Calendar to meetings as well. Uh, Sam, this one's for you really quickly. And guys, I'm just going to leave this poll for another 30 seconds. So uh, say yes if you, you know, if you got them, smoke them. Say yes if you want it. Sam, for you, how do you apply Show Me You Know Me to cold B to C emails, business to consumer. Is that something you've ever seen? Oh, yes. Um, I think can be also a little bit challenging, but just think about what the consumer cares about. Using that as your show me, you know me can be easy. So if they're thinking about whatever that might be, how do they get more Instagram followers or how to do X, Y, Z for their small mom and pop shop? Um, uh, let's say if there's a single, single location or insurance or financial advising advisory, advisory, um, just think about what they care about. Cut through the noise just by talking about something that's specific to them. Your subject line, if it's valuable to them, right? And it's not just the generic stuff will really help. Awesome. All right, guys, I'm going to close this poll. Thank you for those of you who voted. Uh, I'll run it again at the very end if we have time. But Sam, if you want to share your screen, you can take us through some show me, you know me examples uh, right now. Let's get into you it. Bet. Yeah, let's talk about this really quick, right? So I think just a few things I want to mention, um, questions that I saw popping up. So how do we decide who is worth our time for this? And I would tell you, this is where I would say, don't think about quality or quantity. Again, think about quality and go higher. Whoever you're currently reaching out to, I challenge you, reach out to one title above that two titles above that. Most of us, when we send emails, we're comfortable reaching out to our boss's title, right? So maybe that's a manager, senior manager, whatever, and then the skip level. So perhaps the director. But when we start to get to senior director, SVP, CROs, we get super nervous. Don't get nervous. The higher you go in title and the bigger the company, the more spam they get every single day. So 20, 30, 40 emails, I'm not kidding, every single day. There's an executive we talked to who says they spend 30 30 minutes of their day, 30, this is a company called ServiceNow, if you guys know them, spends 30 minutes of their day deleting crappy email in their inbox, not even spam. So easy way to stand out, go higher, you will stand out so much more effectively. The second thing that I would just say is how do you scale this? You don't scale this, just put in the effort. So take a look at this in the email that we've got here. Subject line, Dave Phillips plus LinkedIn plus Sam Sales makes absolutely no sense to you guys, as it should not. It only makes sense to the person that gets it. So think about reading through this email. Talk about the things that we've talked about, right? Transition, challenge, value proposition, the close. It's all there. Now, as you look at this and as we think about the length, right, just like Josh talked about, shorter versus better. Some of you guys asked, what's the Lavender score? I love the friends over at Lavender. What I would tell you is while everybody is saying shorter, shorter, shorter is better, 150 words, making sure you have a, sh a 
good lavender score based on length. Write it as a, the letter F. I never understand that. One really long sentence, one shorter sentence, and a close. What? Don't forget, these are human beings that we're reaching out to first and foremost. And the second thing is, if they're getting 20 of your emails, right? They're getting 20 emails from people just like you every single day. Imagine if they said yes to really short emails. Imagine if you said, hey, saw you guys just had a series raise, suspect that you are ready to increase hiring. That's exactly what we do for your competitors. Worth, worth a chat? No, we already have a recruiter for that. Why should I talk to you? When you think about that, we have to get an executive to spend 13 seconds, 16 seconds to read our email and decide whether or not time with us is going to be well spent. The only time that's going to happen is let's say the recruiter just quit. Let's say they have a bleeding, gushing issue that needs to be resolved right now. That's when they're going to respond. But that's like 3% of our buyers. So we have to think about teaching them something, giving them some kind of hypothesis, showing them a challenge that they may not know how to solve, may not even know that they have. The longer, so long as it is personalized and it cuts the meat in an efficient way, really works. Let me give you an actual example of this. Check this out. This is how I got a meeting with the chief revenue officer a couple weeks ago um, of a company that was recently acquired for over $2 billion. And the cool part about this email is that it took me eight, it took me 18 minutes to get a response. 18 minutes. Now I've changed some of the names and things in here, but check this out. Hugh is Australian plus pipeline diving in quotation marks plus Sam sales. Hugh is Australian. What is that from? That's from a post that this CRO recently made. One of his buddies is Australian and the guy actually, the CRO said, I hate the lack of personalization out there. Nobody seems to care about who I am and what I do. And then his friend Hugh was like, oh yeah, let's talk about really bad show me, you know me. And people just say, hey, I see you're from Australia. Want to buy your stuff? No. So I put that in to be funny. Pipeline diving was something that the person mentioned in his post. It might also be something that the CRO mentioned in an article, in a podcast, and something where he was cited in his content and a comment in somebody else's. This stuff is out there. And then Sam Sales, he has absolutely no idea what the hell that is, most likely, right? And so instead, I add that on as my final thing. He says, I know who Hugh is. I know what pipeline diving is. And it's in quotes, right? Signaling that he's talked about it. And then here's my start. Hey, Josh. Hopefully my mix of facetiousness, rehue, plus listening to your feedback on today's post were enough to earn me an open. He got the open and when he responded, he said, it did and a meeting. Here's my EA to help us book time, boom. He would actually go back. So I'm, I'm tying the hue piece, right? I'm qualifying how I know this person, particularly if the CRO is friends with Hugh, trusts Hugh's opinion, what a great way for me to qualify myself. And then I talked about his company. I've known your company name, forever. Having met your CEO in the early days was recently part of your XYZ marketing campaign. What I haven't been successful in yet is earning your company's business and how we can help your teams grow and flourish. So I'm just being transparent and honest and using a little self-deprecating humor here. And then I'm saying in thinking about your post and your upcoming board meeting, which he mentioned, two media things come to mind, right? You guys are going to roll your eyes and get tired and yawn just reading the rest of this email. Holy crap, it's long but he read the whole thing and he came prepared for our call. And I specifically identified how I can be of help. And I also put a link or two, which you probably can't see in here very well, but put a link or two to say, here's my content. Here's something that I talked about, right? I'm convincing him to give me time. Using this email, not only did I get the CRO of this company to take a meeting with me, I also got the head of social media of Nike to respond to a meeting with me. And then we also cut through the noise of the chief legal officer of Tory Birch in an, e in an email just using that, using some great show me, you know me, and getting a response from the chief legal officer of a $3.4 billion company in 10 hours. Don't focus on scale. Don't focus on quantity, focus on quality, go a little bit higher, right? Adam, I'm with you, huge ass paragraph. And it's only the second part of the email. There's more where that came from at the beginning, right? But man, does this work. I will tell you too, just a quick note on my background. I've broken 13 different sales records in my career. I've never made a cold call, don't yell at me. You can really do this, right, in a quality way. If you just go and think about things in a different way, think about how low the bar is in sales, right? And you can really make impact. And what I'm guessing, here's the final thing I'll, I'll land on, and then we'll look at one more email. Um, we're gonna have so to jump I, to the, we're gonna have to skip the last one, Sam, to make sure we get one. another bullet. Yeah, sorry, keep going. Cool. No, just the last point that I would make here is that if you get an open, 
And if you get a response, here's what's going to happen. A lot of those responses are going to be awesome personalization. Thanks for the no. Thanks for cutting through the noise. We're not interested. I'm not the right person. Now it's not the right time. A uh, freaking, usually is a different word, amazing. Here's why. Because now instead of a yes or a no, or rather being in a maybe, we're getting to a yes or a no. We're opening the door. We can now connect with them on LinkedIn. We can respond, please, for the love of God, respond and say thank you. Thank you so much for your response. I really appreciate it. Then we can use language to ask who the right person is, not to be presumptuous and be like, who is? Instead, right, use some crafty language. We can talk about that another time. But there's so much that you can do just by getting a response. First and foremost, lead with gratitude. Second, connect on LinkedIn. Okay, Josh, I am done talking. You guys probably thought that would never happen, but here, here we are. I love and that. No, you're getting so much love right now, Sam. And everybody, if you want more, you're in luck because Sam runs a consulting company to help Woo! sales teams do this on your own. I'm gonna run this poll for a couple minutes. If you would like Sam to reach out to your team about resources and training, say yes to that poll. And if that wasn't enough, Sam has on her website what are called Sam Shorts. There are oh. short training videos that she has made. She's offered a discount exclusive to Apollo users. Uh, and I'm gonna send you guys a link where you can do that right now we have 10 minutes left in the webinar while i run this poll i'm going to try and take your q a so i've seen a lot of questions about the scalability of this and sam you've talked about it's not scalable and i, I just want to address that from my perspective yeah. guys this is what you do for your highest value prospects where closing the deal doesn't just get you to quota it crushes your quota so i gave you an example of jim rose from pilot that is a multi-billion dollar company. If I was selling couponing and there's a one and a half million person customer base every single day and I close the deal with Pilot, I don't need volume, right? The fact is, this is a method for big deals, ideally. Or like, these are just, not just big deals, these are your most important leads. So I would recommend, and Sam, tell me what you think, spend 80% of your time doing show me, you know me on the 20% of your leads that are most valuable to you. And then Hell spend 20% yeah. of your time doing uh, more automated, personalized at scale emails like we covered in my last webinar with the remainder of your leads. What do you, what do you think about something like that, Sam? Totally, totally agree. And the cool part is, right, when you spend that 80% on the top 20%, your open rates and your replies are going to pop, that you're going to be able to put your feet up. But don't. That's when the stuff starts cooking is you really want to keep your foot on the gas, right? Forget 3x and 4x and 5x of your pipeline. Keep going. But you're going to see such an instant notice. I bet if you guys apply this sometime this week, oh my God, you're all going to see response. You're going to see some win within the next week. Give it a shot. Love that. Okay. I'm going to run the poll for 30 more seconds. So if you guys want to get, if you want Sam to get in touch with you, say yes, you only have 30 seconds to do it. And then because you've stayed to the end, I have a super secret poll I'm going to run for something Apollo related, get you access to something before anybody else. So I need to save time for that. So that's time's clock, uh, clock is ticking. Okay. Um, Sam, Brian is asking, what is your approach to video messaging? The show yeah. me, you know me approach. <laughs> Um, you guys, for all the love that I have for every video platform out there, I think it has a time and place, much like the calendar link. Um, and I would say, don't use it in prospecting. Here's why. What do you guys normally see when you see a video that comes through? You see something like this. Somebody is literally holding up a sign and they're like, Josh, I made you a video. What I think of when I see that is I feel like somebody's been kidnapped and I need to come up with ransom money, right? Like it's the weirdest thing. So here's what I would say. Instead, use your videos strategically when your proposals to connect, send follow-ups um, and thank yous. I love using video when I have a larger, more complex proposal where I know I probably am not going to get um, in front of the buying committee. And I just want to say, hey, everybody, I'm Sam McKenna. Here's what I'm doing. Bop, bop, bop. Let me run you 30 seconds or three minutes usually through the proposal. And then I send that off, especially when I can't get access to the buying committee, which we always not all sometimes cannot. Um, I want to make sure they see my enthusiasm, my personality, my hand gestures for better or worse. Um, but otherwise I say no on video prospecting. Um, and I think people also feel guilted into responding. Um, and then they know that when they, when they look at your video, um, that you're going to see exactly how much time they spent on it. So not my jam, stick to text, use video else place, other places elsewhere. I can Love use that. that else place, new word. Else place, what's up? Today. Okay, we're going to continue taking your questions, but real quick, I'm running this poll. Guys, we are launching a super secret 
new AI assisted home feature, which basically what this is going to do, it's going to use AI to help you work through your tasks from your sequences. I need people to participate in the beta of that. This is not, you cannot find this anywhere else. This is only for people who came to the webinar. If you're interested in participating in the beta, uh, there's no cost. Just say yes. And our team will get in touch with you if you're the right fit. So I'm just going to run that poll for another minute or two. And we're going to take a couple more questions. Joel is asking, can you retarget a list for people who've opened and viewed your message multiple times but have not yet replied? You can, Joel. Uh, Apollo lets you do that using a feature called Plays. If you go to the Apollo website, there's a webinar section. We ran a webinar on Plays. Also, if you go to apollo.io slash academy, I have videos on how to build Plays in the Apollo Academy. So um, if you want more info on that, find me on LinkedIn. You, you guys can connect with me there. Um, okay. I am going to run a couple more uh, questions by you, Sam. Let's hear it. Um, why do you use pluses in your subject line? This is from Harry. Does it I not think, look spammy? I think it's kind of funky. So my my subject lines will always be a little funky. Um, I think when it just sets you apart, it's not what people typically get. I also use uh, hyphens at the end. So I might say today's meeting, thank you, something like that. And I use space hyphen. Just a little funkiness to set you apart. And one more. Thing I will tell you, let's say this is the ninth email you've sent someone, right? You're going through your sequence, all is great. And let's say all of a sudden a awesome call to action comes up. You guys are hosting a really cool webinar. You want to invite them to an executive roundtable. You're hosting an executive dinner or something at a football game or something like that, that you want to invite them to. You're going to be in their city. Think about what you can do before the RE and put your call to action, your compelling issue before the RE. So you might say in Atlanta this week, not sweet, you know, this Thursday, something like that. Put that before the RE. It looks really weird. Holy hell, will you get an open and probably a lot of responses. I love that. Um, for those of you who are not connected with me on LinkedIn yet, I'm, my LinkedIn is on the bottom as a ticker. I post about every webinar and every new course we make on Apollo Academy. So you guys can find me there. Um, okay. I've had a lot of questions, Sam, about, so we talked about the first email, but they want to know, what do you do next? What's the follow-up yeah. cadence? What happens then? Okay. Here is my mega, mega trick for you. So number one, do your research today, carve out the rest of your time and do it today. And then send out your, your email to your highfalutin prospects Thursday and Friday. When does the second email come out, right? You're probably not going to get a response to that first one, but here's what you're going to get for the second one. Send your second email less than 48 hours after your first one. That means I have to work on the weekend. No, it doesn't. That's what you have sequences for. So just set it to go out less than 48 hours, 44 hours, 43 and a half hours. And then that second email should look like this. It should have no new information in it. You already hopefully killed it in your first email. So if you do a reply all, do it with the same subject line, less than 48 hours in it after the first one, and just say, hey, Josh, wanted to pop in and see if you'd had a chance to read my email below. I would still be grateful for, appreciative of, the chance to chat with you about how Sam Sales can support Apollo.io. If you're up for a chat, let me know. Super short. There's your 150 words, friends. That would get a good lavender score. Use that. Super short, super simple. And here's what you're here's what you're gonna do. One, you're giving them no new information because you already sold them the first time. They read your email, they just got busy and distracted. So let's hope that that's the case. Second email comes out when on the weekends. When are they working on the weekends? Executives work an average of almost seven hours. It blows on the weekends. So check that 41.6. Yes, Sam hours. Um, use that, right? And then just send them that quick short note following up. What I think is also just really cool, I'm gonna give you one more side practice here. As you guys work in your LinkedIn uh, connection requests, which to me come around the fourth touch, use in your connection request one, make sure there's a custom script in there, but two, use a word for your really, really top tier people that you may not normally work, use. So maybe you say, hey, if you're ever for a chat, for your top tier people, use the word conversation instead. And here's the cool bonus. On the weekends, yes, this is where you do have to work for a whopping hour on the weekends. Pull up your LinkedIn DM, do a search for the word conversation, pull up any message that you've sent back and forth with an executive that you really care about and use that as a touch point to nurture them. Send them an article, send them something, tell them why you think it's valuable and just say, I hope it is for you too. And that's it. The unbelievable amount of times you will get a dialogue going with a really valuable executive on the weekends by shortcutting your way to those conversations and nurturing them is unbelievable. If you just look for what we call bubble hunting, look for the green dots next to the person's face, see who's online right now and hit them up when they're not distracted and when they're online. 
That was amazing. And we are out of time, everybody. So thank you all so much for coming. Uh, we really appreciate it. We've gone right to the top of the hour. We have more webinars coming. So if you like them, uh, you're in luck because we'll keep doing them. As always, thank you so much for your time, for spending an hour with us. Sam, thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. From the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you all, and we will be seeing you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, guys.